we're doing this because it's something that's very important to me. Um, this is something that, about something that happened to me. And a lot of people, you know, have things that happen to them and by no fault of them. And they're ashamed about it. And for years I was ashamed about it. And at this point, I'm just like, I have no reason to be ashamed. I'm not willing to be a victim twice. And um, that's my motive for doing this is just putting the word out about what happened to me and hopes to help other people and also in hopes to get justice for myself. First off, how old were you? When I was molested, I was 12 years old. Um, my dad, he was arrested for tax evasion and we had been living in California and we had me and my brother, we had to move to Fort Worth, Texas to live with my family and we were not of age to take care of ourselves so we had to go live with family. Now the aunt that he sent us to, she had Alzheimer's so she ended up not being our guardian and her daughter was our guardian. And I had two guardians. It was um, my great aunt's daughter, her name is Shirley Lawson and her daughter who was in her 30s at the time and her name is Stacy Lawson. Now Shirley had a son and his name is Ernest Bernard Lawson and he is the one who um, developed a relationship with me. Um, I didn't know like now that I'm an adult I know when someone's courting me I know if someone's trying to talk to me but coming from a situation a protected situation where I was raised with my father along with my brother um, and had that male figure protecting me I just was not I did not see where he was coming from when he began the relationship that he began with me and basically over a gradual period of time um, Ernest he would you know, he just basically befriended me, taking me to the store, taking me to do everything. Um, there was a point where I was going to babysit his son and I would go over to his house to watch him. And um, on one, this particular night, he asked me to spend a night. Well, he asked his mom, could I spend a night? And she allowed me to spend a night. Me, at this time, a 12-year-old girl and him in his 20s. But his wife was there and his other two children were there. And, um, I woke up and he was giving me oral sex and um, you was 12 I was 12 years old and that's how it started and when you're when you're young like that it's like you never experienced these things before so I don't know if anybody has had oral sex but it's not an unpleasant experience however you know as I got older and thinking about thinking back on everything it really disgusts me that he would pursue me in that way and I know that you know, anyone can mack on a 12 year old. Anyone can, you know, that's why they have these boundaries there. And that's why you have parents that are there to protect children and protect, you know, um, girls who are 12, 13, even 10, you know, years of age from men like Ernest. But unfor unfortunately, I didn't have that protection. Like, he would just um, take me different places, like, asked me did I want to go on his trips with him. He does pest control even to this day. He goes into people's homes and uh, does pest control. You know, asked me do I want to ride with him and then talk to me while we're riding around. Ask me questions like, you know, uh, do you have, a, have you ever had a boyfriend and have you ever kissed somebody? And I remember being so much of a child that when he asked me these questions at that time I didn't smile because I hadn't really grown into my teeth all the way and uh, I remember like covering up my mouth and smiling you know that's how so he clearly saw that you was innocent correct mm. I was just I was shy I was in a new place a new state you know with me being the daddy's girl I'm used to a male being nice to me and taking me to do things and investing time in me I did not have any romantic interest in him whatsoever at all I and mean, what was going through your head well, it was a difficult situation because I had a relatively normal life in Sacramento with my dad and him um, being incarcerated was one of the most devastating things that had happened to me up until that point. And basically, um, you know, the conditions at Shirley's house were deplorable. I mean, there was no running water. So me going over to 
um, Ernest's house was an opportunity for me to take a shower. His sister, she's um, morbidly obese. She would wake me up out of my sleep at three o'clock in the morning to make her some noodles or whatever. Um, it was just a bad situation for me. It was a difficult time for me. And um, even right now and thinking about it, I'm not able to connect to what I was feeling at that time because these are some of the most painful experiences of my life. So how long did this go on though, from the time you were 12 until when? Um, until the time that I was 14, um, I was impregnated. He impregnated me at 13 and I, so this guy was this guy was your first experience with sex. That's correct. That's correct. It wasn't. It was a gradual thing. It wasn't that he just tried to, you know, hop in the sack with me or whatever the case may be. He took his time. He was very calculating, and this baby proved that he was committing a crime. But they still tried to make me have an abortion. This ain't like a 12 year old and a 13 year old trying to be together. This is a grown man that's yes, this. He was 24 years old when I was 12. There was no way that I would, you know, go and see a 12 year old on the street and try to talk to them. No, absolutely not. I would never do such a thing. And the fact that it was done to me, it it just created a a pain in me that I can't describe. And it's, it's something that I wouldn't I don't know how he did it. Where did these things take place? What sometimes, happened? sometimes Stacy, she, like I said, she was really um, big, so she rarely left her room. So he would come by, and sometimes we would be in like the back shed or um, the floor, or the um, back porch that was enclosed, or he would take me to like um, hourly motel rooms and. Um, just pretty much anywhere that he could do it without being seen, that's where he would do it. And you were how old? I was 12 at the time. By the time that um, I was 13, I was pregnant. When you're young and you don't understand everything that's going on in your mind, you just think that this is normal because this is your first experience. Now this is a person who had a, a girlfriend with children who's now his wife and this is a person who had a mistress as well so it was definitely as an adult with, an, with a situation a situation with a man that has a mistress and who has an almost wife it's not going to be acceptable to you but when you're 12 and this is the only situation that you've ever known this is your first experiences you're just kind of going with it you're a child everything is outside of your control you do as you're told so it's not like it's not like you sit there and think, oh, well, I need to do this or do that. You know, it's kind of a situation where this is what it is, and I'm counting down the days until my daddy comes home. His mama knew what was going on? Yes, his mom knew what was going on. I remember he used to go to her and be like, um, can I take Mara? They call me Mara, even though uh, my name is Mara. They call me Mara, and he was like, can I take Mara to the, to the park? Which I'm a big girl. What is he going to do? Push me on a swing, you know? It's like, that's not even logical. And um, I remember his mom being like, no, Ernest, you cannot take her. This and this and that. And he was kissing her on the neck, talking about, please, mama, please. Just kissing on her neck. And it's like, in retrospect, it's like, please what? Allow me to go have sex with this child, you know? So did she, she know did she, did she know what, what, what was happening? Uh, yes, I know that she did. Because when everything came out, when I ended up being pregnant, he went to his mom. And he talked to her and I was not there for that conversation. But what he told me, his exact words to me after having the conversation with her is, um, she already knew. And the thing is, it's just like me being pregnant. I didn't even know what that meant. I had never been around anybody that was pregnant. I never seen anybody, you know, be pregnant and have a baby. I knew as an ideal what being pregnant was. Like I didn't know what me being pregnant was, what type of changes it would have on me like right now if I found out you know that I was expecting a child my thought process would be totally and completely different than what it was at that time it's like I didn't even know about my own body enough to know how that would affect me so when they found out that you were pregnant how did the family react to that they tried to make me have an abortion and the lady at the abortion clinic saved my birth daughter's life because um, you know, I guess she's seen it in my face. I had already watched all those horrible abortion, uh, anti-abortion movies, and I really didn't want to have an abortion. 
And she was like, you know, baby, if, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to do this. And I told her I didn't want to do it. And I had to take a whooping for that. I had to take a whooping for that. But then after You that, mean they gave you, a, they whooped you because you didn't want to yes, have an abortion? Yes, absolutely. Whooped my ASS because I did not want to have an abortion. Whooped me. They were mad at you? Yes. Because this, to them, this, the way that they presented it to me is, is if your dad finds out about this, he's going to kill him. And when he kills him, he's going to go to jail. Is that what you want? And there was nothing more than I wanted than to have my dad come back and us be together as a family again. But at the same time, I couldn't take a life after seeing all of that. So the other alternative was placing the baby up for adoption. So I um, had to go away. I had to go away um, to a dormitory and I actually um, went through the process to place the baby for a semi-open adoption um, through an affluent adoption agency in Fort Worth. And um, you know, I went through most of my pregnancy there. Like as soon as I started showing, I was gone. I was out of, I was out of sight. So no, your friends didn't get in touch with you. Nobody no, knew where you nobody were. Nobody knew where I was, and basically they concocted a story <clears throat> saying that my uncle, who was over 70 years old, who had just passed away from stomach cancer, they said that he was the father of my baby because he could not stand up for himself and say no, I did not do this. But he never touched me. That's right. And you know, at this point, did they reach out to you when you was at the at the? Um at the, the, the dorm? Well, they were in control of who got to see me, who who did not get to see me. And basically, he would come and check me out. He would come, pick me up. Nothing really stopped. And I think... You were still having sex while you were pregnant? While I was pregnant, he would still come and get me and, you know, take me out to eat or whatever. Um, initially, um, you know, with the relationship, marijuana was involved. Like, he would smoke with me and... You know, just... This is why you were pregnant? Or um, before no, you were pregnant? No, before I was pregnant. As wow. the relationship progressed, he, you know, would smoke with me and just, you know, a normal a normal instance when before I was pregnant would be he picked me up, we smoke, we eat, we go somewhere and have sex, he brings me back home. I cook for my family of nine at that time, um, even though... I was 12, I was 13, I was responsible for doing all the cooking. Um, after, when I was pregnant, he would pick me up, we would eat, and we would have sex. So basically, know? he knew it was wrong, but he still continued to do it. He was 24 years old. I wish he would have just left me alone. It never should have had a beginning. It never should have had a beginning. It's not like I was out there and doing things. No, I was in the house or with him. So why didn't you tell anybody that this was going on? You know, there's been so many days that I think about that, you know, like I wish I would have just told. I wish I would have just told, but they, it was just a lot of adults between Ernest, his mother Shirley, and his sister Stacy, all of them Lawson's. They just had such a grasp on me. You know, they just, how hard is it for three adults to manipulate one child, you know? And I did not, I know my daddy, and I know I'm a daddy's girl, and I know my daddy loves me, and what they were saying was true. If my daddy found out, Ernest would have hell to pay, hell to pay. And I didn't want to lose my dad. How did they respond to the fact that you may tell somebody that that was his baby? What did his mom do about that? She made sure that the baby wasn't going to be in play. I mean... How did she react? She just, she had a lot of talks with me and told me, you know what, Mara, you're going to just have this baby and you're going to do this and you're going to get on with your life. And, you know, it's like it never happened. You're just going to move on. That's what you're going to do. You're just gonna move on. She never, I never seen her held, hold him at fault um, about what he did to me. She would just talk to me like I was in control and this is what I need to do and I need not tell anyone. Most of the time she talked to me, it was about not telling anyone, not telling my father and moving on with my life. 
is what she wanted. And um, 